This is the map of the Western US and Canada, a region sitting on the edge of seismic disaster. Stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, this area is home to the infamous Cascadia subduction zone. The ground heaves, buildings crumble, and in an instant, a massive wave surges toward the shore. It might sound like a nightmare, but it's the terrifying reality that could strike if the Cascadia subduction zone finally ruptures. Here's the unsettling part. Scientists believe this disaster is inevitable, and when it happens, the devastation could be beyond anything we've seen. What makes this threat so dangerous, and are we truly prepared for what's coming? Let's get into it. What is the Cascadia subduction zone? The Cascadia subduction zone is a massive 600 mile long fault line running off the coasts of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. It's an area where two tectonic plates meet, with the Pacific Ocean floor slowly pushing beneath the North American plate. This process is called subduction, and it's a recipe for disaster when enough pressure builds up. Over time, these plates get stuck against each other, building immense stress. When they finally give way, the result is a massive earthquake, known as a megathrust earthquake. This isn't just a theoretical concern. The last major earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone happened in 1700. It was a catastrophic event, triggering a powerful tsunami that swept across the Pacific and even hit Japan. The fact that it's been more than 300 years since the last quake raises concerns that the region is due for another one. Scientists believe these major quakes occur every 500 years, give or take, which means we might be in the window for the next big one. When it does happen, the effects could be devastating, both for the people living along the coast and for the infrastructure in major cities like Seattle and Vancouver. New insights into the Cascadia subduction zone. A groundbreaking study in 2024 has brought new clarity to the dangers lurking beneath the Cascadia subduction zone. For the first time, researchers completed a comprehensive survey of the seafloor using advanced geophysical instruments. This wasn't just another routine exploration. It was a game changer for understanding how the plates are behaving down there. The team used sound pulses to create detailed images of the structures beneath the seafloor, allowing them to see the fault in ways we've never been able to before. One of the most important revelations from the study is that the fault isn't a simple, continuous structure. It's divided into at least four distinct segments. Each of these segments has its characteristics, which could either help contain the rupture of an earthquake or allow it to spread further, causing even more damage. Some parts of the fault are marked by features like underwater faults and seamounts, which act as barriers. These could potentially stop an earthquake from ripping through the entire fault line. However, other sections are smoother and more prone to a full-scale rupture. This means that the earthquake could grow much larger if it starts in one of these areas. Vancouver Island to Washington State One of the most worrying parts of the Cascadia subduction zone is the segment stretching from Vancouver Island down to Washington State. This section is particularly dangerous because of its smooth structure and the way the oceanic plate is sliding underneath the continental plate at a shallow angle. While some other parts of the subduction zone are rough and irregular, which might limit the spread of an earthquake, this segment is much more likely to rupture along its entire length in one go. If this section of the fault were to rupture completely, the resulting earthquake could be enormous. The length of the rupture plays a big role in determining the size of the earthquake. The longer the rupture, the more energy is released. And this segment's smooth surface means that it's more prone to a full-length rupture. If that happens, the earthquake could reach a magnitude of nine or more, which is the kind of event that would cause widespread devastation. If you like this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. For major cities like Seattle and Tacoma, the implications are even more severe. The shallow subduction angle means that the fault line lies closer to the surface underneath Washington's Olympic Peninsula, which could amplify the shaking felt on land. This means that an earthquake originating in this segment could result in not just alarming, but potentially catastrophic damage to buildings, infrastructure, 
and lives in these densely populated areas. The risk for Seattle, in particular, is significant, given its location and the proximity of this dangerous fault segment. Earthquake and Tsunami Risks When we talk about earthquakes in the Cascadia subduction zone, we're talking about megathrust earthquakes, the kind that occur when one tectonic plate suddenly shifts under another. These aren't your average earthquakes. They involve massive movements deep within the earth, causing violent shaking both underwater and on land. When the pressure between the plates is finally released, it can result in the type of earthquake that shakes the ground for several minutes, knocking down buildings, rupturing pipelines, and creating chaos across a huge region. But that's not where the danger ends. A large earthquake in the Cascadia region is almost certain to trigger a massive tsunami. When the ocean floor shifts dramatically during an earthquake, it displaces enormous amounts of water. This sends a giant wave racing across the ocean at high speeds. As the tsunami approaches land, it slows down but gains height, potentially reaching over 100 feet tall by the time it hits the coast. This is exactly what happened during the 2011 Fukushima disaster in Japan, and the same scenario could easily play out along the U.S. and Canadian coastlines. Ongoing scientific efforts and preparedness. When it comes to natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis, the best thing we can do is be prepared. And right now, scientists are working tirelessly to make sure we have the tools and knowledge to handle what's coming, especially when it comes to the Cascadia subduction zone. This area has the potential to unleash one of the most powerful earthquakes and tsunamis we've ever seen, so understanding it better and preparing for the inevitable are top priorities for researchers and governments alike. Scientists are constantly gathering and analyzing data to improve our ability to forecast earthquakes and predict how they might unfold. While it's impossible to predict the exact time an earthquake will strike, research has progressed to the point where we can assess risks with greater accuracy. One of the most important aspects of this work is the detailed seafloor imaging data that has been collected over the past few years. Using advanced technology, researchers have been able to map out the underwater fault lines of the Cascadia subduction zone. These images provide a much clearer picture of the way the tectonic plates are interacting beneath the surface, allowing scientists to better predict where and how future earthquakes might occur. These images are crucial because they reveal complex structures that we didn't know existed before. For instance, the Cascadia subduction zone isn't just one continuous fault line. It's broken into several segments, each with its potential to trigger an earthquake. By understanding the shape and layout of these segments, scientists can refine their models and better predict what might happen if one of them ruptures. This detailed understanding of the seafloor has also allowed for more accurate tsunami modeling, which is another key area of research. Tsunamis, of course, are one of the biggest concerns when it comes to a megathrust earthquake in Cascadia. If the seafloor shifts dramatically, it can displace enormous amounts of water, creating waves that could devastate the coastlines of the Pacific Northwest. Scientists are using the new seafloor data to model how these tsunamis would move, where they would hit hardest, and how much time people would have to evacuate. Preparedness isn't just about gathering data, though. Governments and local authorities are also stepping up their efforts to make sure buildings and infrastructure are ready for a major earthquake. Many of the cities and towns along the Cascadia subduction zone, places like Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, are undergoing significant updates to their building codes to ensure that new constructions can withstand a large quake. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.